Good evening and welcome to the February 27th, 2014 meeting of the Northampton School Committee. <coughs> we'll begin by asking the clerk to call the roll. Present. Present. Here. Here. Present. Present. Thank you very much. So tonight's meeting uh, is uh, it was reserved specifically to um, begin discussion of the FY 2015 budget for the school department. And so I will turn it over to the superintendent. Uh, who wants to make some opening remarks mm -hmm. before turning it over to Mr. McLaughlin. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to start with saying that uh, we have a proposed budget this evening for FY15, uh, which we feel very good about. And um, I want to say on behalf of the Northampton School District, uh, we really want to thank the residents of Northampton, specifically for their approval of the override vote last year and just in general for their total support of the educational system in Northampton. So again, it, it's been um, wonderful um, to think that we have such supportive people living in Northampton for education. Fortunately, we find ourselves in a much better place financially this year than we did last year. Uh, although I was not here, I certainly read the newspaper articles and I know how difficult it was in this district last year and you faced um, uh, uh, rift situations with teachers and fortunately um, most of those positions were able to be restored as a result of the override. Uh, this year we're not looking for any layoffs uh, but rather we're seeking to moderately increase our educational capacity through um, some additional staffing, some services and some material goods. Um, we have this evening with us Mark McLaughlin, who's our business manager. He's going to be providing an overview of the pro proposed FY15 budget and also talk about um, an overview that he passed out to the board at this point. And I think he's going to speak to that so that people at home can hear it as well. Um, during the presentation, there'll be a couple of areas in which I'm going to interject some of the educational um, needs that we have. Uh, but for the most part, uh, Mark will be presenting. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to our business manager. Thank you. In front of you this evening, there's a, there's a, a packet with a number of uh, documents in it for your benefit. And uh, uh, you can see the first item that was there was the budget calendar and timeline. Uh, with the changes that have gone on this past year, it was good to put a calendar out so we could define our process, know when certain things are going to happen. Um, because of the change in the charter, that moves our budget process up a couple of months. <clears throat> so trying to put that all in writing and to meet all the goals in the uh, charter dates that the mayor needs to receive our information by. Um, that's why you also have a copy of the budget calendar tonight. Also in your, in your packet is a comparison of the appropriation budget uh, for the school. And you probably have a, a 12, 13 year history. This is something that was part of the budget package of last year. Talks, it shows you the number of local appropriated budgets, uh, the previous change over prior year. It gives a little perspective of the number of students to teachers and student teacher ratio um, at the same time. But also shows you the chapter 70 aid that we had received over the last dozen years or so. And what we actually look at as our actual net school spending, which is our uh, total spending for our, for our school budget. So that's for your information uh, to uh, look over. Also, what you received last month, um, wanted to make sure it came to you again as a point of importance, uh, is the uh, open enrollment information and the school choice information, the uh, number of positions that had been approved for this upcoming year. So you have a number of uh, documents there, but just again, added information for, for your reading. <coughs> Also in your packet is a budget overview, and if you don't mind, I would just like to read through it and 
then we can move on to the next part. Um, a few highlights from FY14. As you're aware, the budget for FY14 had been voted and approved twice. The initial approval was on April 11th, uh, 2013 by the school committee, and then again on July 2nd as a result of the proposition override. Those override funds uh, have allowed the district to maintain a high level of education uh, and uh, a high level of education that the community has been expected uh, and accustomed to. The FY15 budget process. The budget process started early this January as defined on the budget calendar timeline for FY15. The calendar timeline has been moved up, as I explained. Um, the governor also announced the budget, uh, the state budget, in late January, and the mayor also conducted a joint city council and school committee meeting on January 30th. Under a level service budget, the school department had been given a range of funds for FY15. The funding range would be between 2.5% to 3%. The minimum funding of 2.5% would be approximately $637,000, and if it was 3%, it would be $765,000. These funds are used to support the same level of services as we have in FY14. The purpose of the funding range is that there is still some uncertainty in the GIC in the amount of increase that will come to the city in FY15, and that's why we're working with the range here. Some other areas that are subject to change and could impact the budget over the next month, um, as I'm looking through my notes, uh, and we would anticipate any antis added state aid any changes in federal and state grant funding, any changes in circuit breaker funds, and <coughs> school choice. A detailed outline of all the other revenue sources will be finalized and generated once those funds become clearer, and we will have a definite uh, uh, list of those by the end of March. So at this point, uh, we're going uh, forward and processing on the assumption that the, those funds will remain level funded. It's different than level service. Our budget would be level service, but those other sources of state funds would, would be level funded. <clears throat> the administrative team uh, has been reviewing the needs of the district uh, as they were funded in the FY14 budget. There's been significant changes in the special ed department throughout a, through a realignment that happened uh, at the end of August 2013. The administration uh, team uh, continues to review the goals of the districts uh, as we meet our student needs. Some of the major goals that we've currently are engaged in are the new teacher evaluation process, the DDMs or determined district measures, the preparation for park testing, which is some ways going to replace the MCAS testing, and we're adjusting to the new Aspen student software, just to name a few things. <coughs> The administrative team continues uh, to look on ways that we can continue our positive approach to problem solving and improving communications with the community and building confidence in our school. The first draft of the FY15 budget is a level service budget. The financial overview is the same as last year and is presented to help outline the use of the new level service funds. Uh, this means that the overview draft budget present, presents all staff and programs that are current in Northampton Public Schools today. This does not represent all the school needs, nor does it represent a balanced budget at this time because we're still working with level funding with the circuit breaker and state funding. We could get a little bit more, we could get a little bit less. <clears throat> Um, it's simply our calculation at this time to keep us uh, with a level in, in a level service area. Over the next month, the financials will be refined considering all those funding sources. Even though some areas of the overall budget might increase or decrease based on the level of service required from one year to the next, the financial impact will most likely increase due to contractual or mandated changes. Some key points to note for FY15. Uh, our projected student population for FY15 should remain fairly flat and hopefully increase with the 67 open positions that were uh, approved at the last meeting. Our current budget, it's 25,507,768, which represents our local funding to the school. 
Um, that is also on the historical chart that you folks have. Um, the new union contracts have been settled covering a period of July 1st, 2013 through July 30th, 2016. The initial overview of the budget includes the cost of steps for all collective bargaining employees. Initial estimate is in around $325,000. The budget includes uh, teachers making lane changes due to degree advancement. And right now we have about 15 uh, staff members uh, making lane changes from a master's to a master's 30, from a master's 30s to a CAGS, so forth. Uh, most staff changes for FY15 have been accounted for during this initial view, uh, review of the budget. Uh, SPED tuitions are currently maximized using our local funds. Uh, the entitlement grant, circuit breaker funds, and school choice are also used to offset any of those higher costs. Exact grant funding has not yet been determined, therefore the grants will be built, again, on the premise of level funding unless we get anything in writing from the Department of Education or we see uh, uh, something that we should change based on prior revenue history. In FY14, the district uh, expected to receive $1.3 million in grant funding. In FY15, the RTT grant, which we've had for the last few years, uh, will expire and we will end up losing $34,000 uh, in funds. We need to address the, uh, a particular issue in that grant, which is we have a partial position that's funded out of that grant. So we need to see if we can roll any funds forward or uh, we can put that position in another grant. For FY15, we should expect approximately one point or 1,362,000, which is the difference between um, uh, the FY14 number and taking out the RTT grant. Last year, the grants paid for 17.5 employees who otherwise would have been part of our local budget. We anticipate circuit breaker funds to be approximately 500,000 in FY15 and choice revenues uh, to be 1,315,000, just down slightly from FY14. Other revenue funds such as food service, athletic, busing, and building use should remain fairly constant um, from one year to the next. Um, other budgeted line items as funded through the local appropriation will be reviewed and continue to be reviewed on an individual basis. Chapter 70 funds for FY15, we just received $70,325, which basically is approximately what we received last year. It's not a lot of money. Um, capital expenditures uh, are provided by the city over the past two years, um, which has allowed the school to update our buildings and our infrastructure. Um, we are expecting another $100,000 for technology improvement plan. This is the last payment of a $300,000 plan that was presented two years ago. And you can see as you walk throughout the building, there's a lot of uh, changes in the technology area. The technology infrastructure throughout the district had been lacking for a while, but with the support of these funds, um, we can continue to upgrade the instructional software, new hardware, new antivirus wear, internet access, and uh, wireless capabilities. In, in the budget, uh, we also assume some salary increases for the superintendent position. Um, the committee had voted up to $150,000, which would put that at $19,000 more than what's in our current budget. Um, we have a financial accounting payroll adjustment, which is $12,000. It's because of the way the uh, cycle of the calendar and the Munis system processes uh, everybody's pay. We have to make a, uh, a minor adjustment there. And then there's an equity salary adjustment of $20,000, which we will uh, discuss when I pass out the next sheet. Um, also, as part of, our, of a new mandate, the district needs to add two new FTEs. These are tiered support specialist positions uh, that are going to be required at the elementary level. And those will be outlined on the sheets coming around to you now. <coughs> the 
This page, that you, you, this two-page section that you have, the stapled uh, pages that you have here in front of you, the first page uh, is our working copy uh, as part of our overview. Uh, same thing as we had last year. Um, this year is much nicer. It's only one page, and we're not reducing, <laughs> reducing staff or, uh, or other areas of the budget. So if I could start with the very top, the FY14 revised budget, which included the initial budget that was voted in April, plus the two and a half override. Um, we're working with a budget this year of 25,507,768. If we add in our FY15 chapter 78, which is 70,325, and the estimated level funding of our budget moving forward, um, at, a, at the two and a half percent rate of 637,694. We would project the budget to be 26,215 uh, for the upcoming year. With that increase and the two, er two things that are increasing our budget is the 70,000 chapter 78 and the 637 from level funding. Um, that's a, that is a total of $708,000. So when we looked at the budget and all the administration weighed in, as we have done in the past, to look at what our needs were, I will go down the list here, and we took different parts of the budget and assigned dollars to them the best we could at this point for all the information that we know. One of the first and big items in our budget is the collective uh, bargaining agreements. Um, that's $325,000. That represents all the new contracts that we are engaged in right now uh, over, the, over the next, uh, this is just the one year, but the contracts are spread over three years. The line under that is the teacher lane changes. Again, that represents 15 uh, staff members um, for 98,000. Last year, um, I think we had a much smaller amount of lane changes uh, that finally went through, and that was probably about 50 or 60 thousand dollars. So it was not as much as what we have this year. A lot of teachers have moved up in their uh, in their lanes. The, uh, the next line item on here would be the new superintendent salary as recommended and voted by the committee. Um, the current salary that would, is in the budget is uh, 131,000, so adding 19,000 would bring it to a maximum. So I wanted to be conservative and show the maximum amount that um, would, be, would be there. Um, the accounting payroll accrual adjustment for FY15, again, this is because of the way the calendar falls, the way the pays fall, and, and how we report to uh, Department of Revenue and uh, a variety of those things all put together, very technical little things uh, that are there. Uh, the next item, which is the administrative salary equity adjustment, I think mm -hmm. the superintendent would like to address that. Yes. Um, what has happened over the years is basically what I consider to be an inequity in salaries of non-union administrators. Um, the most recent administrators who have been hired have been hired at competitive wages um, because you needed to do that in order to get the good administrators that you have. However, the original administrators who have been here for a number of years um, because of um, budget difficulties over several years um, really have not uh, kept pace. In fact, there were three years, I believe, they did not get any increase whatsoever. So um, we have um, recommended to the school committee to put in $20,000, uh, which would be used to try to spread among the veteran administrators um, to bring them up to um, some level that's comparable to where the new ones are. All right. Okay. Um, the next uh, item says increase for our attendance uh, social worker to 100%. Uh, right now we split our attendance social worker with Smith Vocational and we have uh, realized that there's a need 
to have this person full time for us. Uh, the workload has increased that much to bring uh, that position back fully in house instead of splitting it with Smith vote. Next line item, additional SPED teacher for Ryan Road. Um, this is to meet a new IEP and workload issues at that particular school. Next item would be the elementary SPED support services. It's a clerk type position at a 0.5 FTE. Um, last year, we eliminated our uh, ETLs last year and uh, it's finally come through this year that we've realized that there has been a lack of meetings and schedules and appointments and organization at the elementary level when we have to have structured meetings with parents and uh, the special ed director has looked at that and the overall need and it's disruptive now but this would put a little bit more structure and organization in getting those meetings scheduled and not miss particular deadlines on IEP plans. The speech language teacher at Leeds is an increase of a 0.2. The person would be going from a 0.6 position to a 0.8 position. And again, this is to handle a bigger and a larger workload um, at that school. And I think the superintendent will address the next two items. These are two positions we're looking to be called tiered support specialists. Um, these two positions would be shared uh, among the four elementary schools. There would also be one, you will note there, uh, for JFK. And we're looking for someone who would be certified teacher, um, probably in special education. The tiered support or re-engagement teacher would have a dual role in the elementary schools. One, to continue to support a student's academic progress during in-school suspension, which is per the new law which takes effect July 1st. It's called Chapter 222, um, or as I fondly refer to it, is an unfun unfunded mandate. Um, but basically, we need someone who's going to be able to take care of these youngsters um, at the elementary and the middle school level um, because we will not be sending them home and we will not be suspending them as easily as and I don't mean to say as easily, but um, it used to be a situation where we could send them home and now we're not going to be able to. Um, secondly, um, they would also work in conjunction with classroom and special education teachers to provide targeted instruction to a student with tier two or tier three needs, again, in a small setting. Um, as I said, this would help us comply with the new law because now we must provide education for all students who are suspended. It has been that we only needed to provide it for those who were special education. Now it's all students. And we may not suspend before a formal <coughs> meeting with a parent. So for instance, if a principal needed to suspend a student, um, you need to send a formal letter and you need to schedule a meeting. And if that meeting doesn't take place for two days or three days, the student may not stay at home. The student needs to stay in school and be provided educational services. At the elementary level, I think, um, although it may not have been um, strictly the right thing to do, I think sometimes when we have children who misbehave at the elementary level, we call the parent and suggest maybe they'd like to spend the rest of the day at home. Um, we cannot do that. <laughs> so um, by having these two people um, shared, basically it'd be two and a half days at each of the elementary schools, this would provide coverage for these incidences, plus it would provide the opportunity for principals to be in classrooms doing their evaluation. Um, and the other two and a half days, when the, this person doesn't exist, the principal has to do it, because there isn't anyone else. Um, so um, we did not feel we could put in um, a person for each of those schools. So um, I want to commend the administrative team for trying to figure out how best we could do this. Uh, and we felt sharing um, two people for four elementary schools would be useful. For JFK, which is a little further down, there is currently a, um, an ESP um, who's doing something very similar um, on a part-time basis, I believe. 
but we need to have a certified teacher in that position, so we would be looking to expand um, that position, and that's why you see a, a, a smaller cost item for that. We'd be doing away with the ESP position and turning it into a teaching position, because the law does say it has to be a certified teacher. Okay. Um, right underneath that, you see the line that says increase in the high school technology video program from a 0.67 to a 1.0. Uh, the reason for this increase is the high school is looking to offer a full technology program, including courses in Microsoft Office, Microsoft application, web page design, uh, programming, and technology management. So they're looking to increase that. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that particular position. Um, next line is software licenses. Um, we have a number of licenses that uh, we have to renew every year. We do have monies currently in the budget to cover uh, most of the licenses, but as we uh, continue to move forward with new hardware, new software, um, and the price of renewals uh, increase, uh, that software licenses would go for our Novell license renewal, some antivirus software, some mail <coughs> archiving software, and it also um, uh, includes a little bit of our work solution uh, software where we web host our Northampton-K12 uh, um, um, information. Um, the next line is uh, increased data needs, um, and it says Comcast Internet. Um, we have uh, moved away from the re our residential modems that we've had in our buildings here, and we've moved up to a business class level of service with Comcast. And in doing so, it provides more, uh, it provides consistency and uh, a lot more reliability in our access. So um, doing that this year and moving forward, we need uh, to maintain that level of service to support all the machines that we have and be able to get onto the internet. The Aspen software um, increase, uh, that's our new student data information system that we have. Um, we've added a small enhancement to that early on that would help behind the scenes programming, but that represents uh, the contractual uh, increase to uh, that software. And then the last item in this particular first tier of the 2.5 is the health tongue twister, health office web hosting. Um, we used to have our health office here on our own servers. This past year, we had a server go down and crash on us, and we uh, were out of uh, any documentation that uh, we were able to access for student health. So we have no longer moved in that direction. We are on a web hosting uh, service uh, that was determined between the uh, health department with Karen Jarvis Vance and Angelo. So um, we could prevent things like that. Also, the automatic updates that would be coming from the health office uh, would be done automatically. So they made a decision that they need to move forward and uh, this year, that health office uh, hosting, part of that has come out of a grant. So in this year's budget, there won't be uh, but only a few dollars reflected uh, in our budget. Um, next year, um, we don't think that that could be uh, a new initiative or a continued initiative out of a health grant. So it's in our local budget for this upcoming year. If I bump down to the level service budget, as it says, as 3% of our budget, you see a uh, added elementary technology specialist. Um, currently, we have one person like that split between all the elementary schools. Um, she goes between the schools, so she's in the schools one day a week. She works with teachers. Uh, works with staff, works right in the classrooms, uh, works with the um, lesson plans of the teacher, and helps 
uh, connect the technology to the lesson plan and the initial materials that the teacher is using that particular day. In some cases, she acts as a co-teacher when she's engaging in the instruction from a technology point of view. Um, the administrators have looked at that as a uh, huge improvement and a huge asset uh, of what we have now and want to expand that so we can get a couple days uh, per person. So if we added an additional person, we could have one person for one, two schools and, and the existing person for the other two elementary schools. Next item, increase in the high school word language position. Uh, the high school wants to add this position and alleviate uh, the large class sizes uh, in the Spanish class, in, in the Spanish uh, uh, world language classes. And also, uh, they want to make sure that they have enough availability for students to obtain a language class so they can meet the mass core requirement of two years of a language. So they want to expand that area to get the class sizes down to an appropriate level. Uh, the next item, the reading intervention ESP at Ryan Road. Um, we have a half-time person there now and want to increase that by another half-time. Um, basically just because of the reading levels and the reading needs in the building um, that's been talked about for a while. So that's why that's on the list right here. Preschool education supports, uh, tool of the minds. I think the superintendent would like to address that. Um, choose tools of the mind is a program that focuses on three specific goals for children. We're talking preschool at this point. Uh, it's to develop children's underlying cognitive skills in terms of self-regulation, focused attention, and deliberate memory. It's to build children's foundational skills in literacy and mathematics. It's to develop children's social-emotional school readiness, how to exercise emotional and behavioral self-control through seeing another's perspective and feeling empathy. Um, we have, in Northampton, had a pilot project this past year, a research project. Uh, with tools of the mind. It's been at Bridge Street and it's been in kindergarten classes. The results have been um, really extraordinary with children making great strides both academically and socially and emotionally. So given the research and the impact and self-regulation skills on academic achievement and the success we've had with that, um, Mrs. Black is suggesting that we uh, have the program for all of the preschool students uh, for next year and then hopefully expanded into the rest of the kindergarten classes the year after. So that's why that's in here. Next item on the list says uh, added technology supplies for each of the buildings. Um, again, we are trying to improve our computer, our infrastructure, our wireless, but we've also seen a need other than the main um, systems of your your monitor, your keyboard, your drive, um, that the individual buildings are trying to support the existing technology that's been put into their buildings over time. So if they need to replace uh, projectors or they need to replace the Elmos or they need to uh, get document cameras or they decide they want to try wireless keyboards or replace bulbs in some of these items which are fairly expensive. Um, the technology director uh, in conjunction with the building uh, principals uh, decided that they do need some money so they can buy this as, as a building supply to keep their buildings up and running and functioning versus going to the tech department to get smaller type items uh, moving forward so they can buy them on their own. The last item is additional instructional software and licensing. Uh, this includes a number of things. Um, a Novell network upgrade in software um, and also um, since we use Microsoft we have some licensing fees and some fees that uh, associate with the Windows 7 as we upgrade some of our computers. Right now we're on Windows XP and we're moving to uh, Windows 7 on all of our new, um, um, on all of our new um, computers. 
So that second tier, the total cost is 127,000. And the total of the first tier was 708. The two of them together um, is the next line down at $835,000. That's just the first page. Would you like me to pause? <laughs> or would you like me to uh, move on to the, the last page and kind of summarize where we are overall? Um, I guess I, uh, I have a question. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering about in your uh, sort of the upper first tier, the collective bargaining agreements, um, what that number represents. Uh, because that number is significantly, well, just by way of example, significantly lower than it was in FY14, for example. Uh, uh, I mean, much lower than FY14. Is that steps and COLA combined? What are you calculating there? That that is, as I've looked at it now, that's the uh, the steps and the colas for the people who are at the upper end of the salary uh, range. So if somebody that would be including, if somebody was a master's five this year, they would be moving to a master's six next year. That's what that would be including would be that incremental that incremental difference. And COLA. And COLA. So you did steps and COLA. COLAs, yes. But that's not a, but you're not just talking about the upper, you're talking about, but that's, that includes Everyone. for all employees. All employees. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm trying to understand because in our, in the current FY14 budget, Collective bar. I'm go I'm actually looking at the school FY14 budget. The collective bargaining agreements represented 743,000 um, for steps and colas. I mean that's that's what was. Those were the figures that were used in the FY14 budget in just in the in this same cover sheet. Um, and I'm and so I'm I'm trying to understand. Uh, Okay, I'm not, okay, I, I, will, I will look into that, but when I had originally calculated the collective bargaining agreements, um, looking at the new rate that we have, um, that's, that's what I had come up with. Okay, because I'm, I mean, I just, I'm just, just knowing when we've looked at these before and gone through, um, you know, just very using very broad yes. numbers, you know, a 1% Cola was generally about two hundred thousand dollars, roughly, and that may be FY twelve numbers or thirteen numbers. I mean, just I'm just saying that roughly. But then I'm also, th but the cola, I mean, the step was generally a larger number than that as well. Um, so I'm cons I, I'm just raising that because uh, the three twenty five number um, seems low to okay. me. Um, so it's difficult without, I don't, and I don't have the. The contract in front of me, or knowing what the cola is, but um, the stepping that just that number, uh, and I'm only raising it right away because it's uh, it it could, uh, given some of the other numbers down below, it's it's a concern. So okay. Um, it, when I did my preliminary budget analysis, just looking back when we were negotiating collective bargaining, um, step increases in keeping with what we saw last year were 312. The COLA was, this it was a 1%, and we're going to have a blended rate of 1.5. The cumulative budget impact will be slightly over 1.5%. 1% um, was $290,000, uh, so 1.5 would be half of that again, so up to 435. So it is, again, what I was looking at from the previous year was $743,000 covering all impacts of collective bargaining, and that would be step raises, lane changes, and? Well, there was a separate line item for lane changes in that budget, right. 37,424. Mm -hmm. So in any event, it's significantly higher than the 325 plus the 98. So you're I'll Go back and re re <coughs> look at that and recalculate that again. So, so just so I understand, could you just repeat the number again? Just, just that, Mr. Meyer, I, I, uh, I just want to make sure I, I Caught that. Yeah. So, so looking at looking at step increases, and I, I, I can pull up in a few minutes that 
the spreadsheet that I actually fed in all of last you know last year's population for teachers and obviously we had a significant number of new hires so that data will change 312,000 for step increases $290,000 for a 1% COLA add another 50% since we, we've negotiated a 1.5% um, base adjustment and then um, yeah, so those were the, and that, that did not include lane changes since I didn't, since lane changes are highly dependent on where people are in their program. So it was difficult to make a projection based on that. But at least we know, I mean, here it's reported separately as $98,000. 457. Mm -hmm. 457. I got 7.7. Oh, okay. I, okay. Didn't you say it'd be 145 plus 290? Right. One, yeah, exactly. So it would be $435,000. If it was a right. one and a half percent cost of living adjustment, so seven forty-seven with everything together. Four thirty-five. Uh, Four thirty-five. Yes, seven forty-seven is correct. Okay. I get. Um. <coughs> Let's just restart. And of course, that would have to be adjusted if we had significant hires at I the lower ends of the scale. Stop. Where we are. This nerve center discussing more of this. Yeah. Um, so I'm just I'm a, I have to raise that because I'm concerned because we're the other numbers that we're talking about. Uh, would clearly need to be recalculated based on the numbers that we're that we're looking at. Um, uh, so, um, so I'm not sure how to proceed. It just in terms of how we look at the rest of the sheet and look at the summaries of it. I would like to make a suggestion. Okay. I suggest that we adjourn the meeting and that we go back and take care of this problem and see if indeed we do have a problem because there's no sense discussing any of these other items because they will not be possible if indeed the supposition is correct in terms of the amount of money we need for additional salaries. So rather than waste everyone's time, I think we need to have accurate figures to go for. I leave that to your judgment. I, go ahead. Well, I would agree. Um, but I also think that there might be other questions that, that we Most can look at, be, I mean, mm -hmm. before adjourning so that, I mean, there might be more, I mean, I have questions also. I don't know when you want to do it, but I think that's a good idea so we, that we do know. If you have doing. questions, that's fine. I just, I only caution you that, that um, as the superintendent said, there's some concern about some of these numbers mm -hmm. down below. Um, I just, mm -hmm. I, that's the well, other question. Well, like one of my questions is the additional tiered support specialists at the elementary level. We are asking for two at 94,000 and then we have an additional 1.0 FT um, at JFK for 21,000. I just don't understand the figures on that. I'm happy to explain that. Thanks. Um, we currently have at JFK an ESP. We would take the salary of that ESP and combine it with the 21,000 here and make that a teaching position. Okay. So we'd be eliminating an ESP position? Yes. Okay. And the other two are budgeted in um, to the $94,000. So we're looking at um, basically a certified teacher in the forty to $45,000 range in okay. all three instances. Thank you. I have another question. In the health office web hosting, I guess I didn't quite understand um, what it was that you were, did we lose student information when it crashed? I mean, what, what did we lose? Yes. And what are we protecting ourselves from now? Um, I believe they were able to restore uh, the information that was there, but during that time period, everything had to be done manually. So we did lose it. I mean, it came back, but we it did lose back. it. It came back. As far as I know, yes. All right. Thank you. And there's a cost to restoring it, because I had that happen a couple of years ago to my district. Okay. Um, other, any other questions? So I think. So move to adjourn. A second. Okay. That's a non-debatable motion. All those in favor of adjourning this meeting, say aye. 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 Opposed? The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>